And Mali is where we begin. The presidential election campaign there has entered its final few days. More than 20 candidates, including President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita and opposition frontrunner Sumaila Sisse, have been crisscrossing the country to try and win as many votes as possible. They've campaigned on a variety of issues, including reconciliation, corruption, the economy and health care. Clarice Fortuné reports. Eight million Malians are expected this weekend at the polls in a presidential election that many hope will draw away out of six years of political unrest and jihadist violence. It is the first election since the 2013 vote that completed the democratic transition following a coup which led to an Islamist takeover of the north. Security remains the key issue for Malians. Mali's army, French soldiers and a UN mission still have little control over large zones. Many towns in central Mali are abandoned by the state and its security forces. All stakeholders are hardly struggling to implement a peace accord signed in 2015 with the aim of isolating the jihadists. I will vote for the one who can stabilize the country the one who knows the reality of Mali, because today we want to go forward. We don't want troubles in our country, and we want the one who can bring happiness to all Malians from everywhere. Mali needs strong institutions. We don't need big men, but the institution they need to be in respect of stability, the respect of the law. If we have strong institutions, we hope everything will be normal. And that is why we will vote to choose the candidate of our choice. Incumbent President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita is seeking re-election against 23 other candidates. He recognized that the fight against terrorism is a lot more complex, but promised all extremisms must absolutely be undone. We have not inherited a tranquil country. We did not inherit a calm country, a normal country. No, far from it. We had to put in a lot of energy, a lot of courage, and certainly a vision to get this moving. The main contender likely to reach a second round is Soumaïla Sissé, a former finance minister, leader of the Union for the Republican Democracy. Our country is now facing a major choice. Continue on the current path that leads to defeat, or to stand up and become once again what Mali has always been, a stable country, a free country, a united country, a proud country. Voter turnout in Mali elections is usually low, at around 30%. Ahead of the poll, the opposition alleged serious anomalies in the electoral roll published online, such as voters appearing twice and fictitious voting stations or missing information about thousands of expatriate voters. The Prime Minister and the Electoral Commission denied the claims. Clarisse Fortuné, BBC News. Well, let's discuss this election a little further. In a moment, I'll be talking to Paul Melly. He's an associate fellow in the African program at Chatham House here in London. But first, joining us from Mali is Kamisa Kamara. She's chief foreign policy advisor to the president of Mali. Thank you so much for joining us. Talk to us about what platform the president is campaigning on. What issues are most important to him? Well, the issues that are important to uh, the president currently are definitely the security issue that you have mentioned uh, earlier, but also the implementation of the peace agreement that was signed in 2015 between armed groups and the government of Mali. Uh, this peace agreement was signed after months of negotiations. It really put an end to the fourth touring rebellion that the Malian government has uh, encountered. And uh, really, this peace agreement is um, a, a passport for uh, Mali's uh, stability moving forward. So the issues that are important for, for Mali as a whole, not only for the president, but for, for, for Mali as a country, 
are definitely the security situation, the implementation of the peace accord, but also the nice economic growth that Mali has uh, known over the, the past um, a few years, about uh, 6 percent uh, per year. And, and now, um, now the talk, challenge. Is you're talking about economic growth, but a lot of people aren't happy with uh, the economy at the moment, especially young people. Many young people will be voting for the first time in this election. What is the president saying to convince them that he will be able to do with another term what he hasn't been able to do so far? So what I can tell you is that uh, figures do show that uh, Mali has a strong economic growth of about 6% uh, annually. And um, the challenge is also always to translate this economic growth at the macroeconomic level uh, to, the, to the microeconomic level. Uh, now what youth want in Mali and what is not different from what youth want in other African countries, it's uh, employment, um, it's uh, access to trainings, and it's uh, for them to have a vision uh, about their future. That's what youth want in Africa, but also around the world. And that's what uh, the Malian government is working towards. And in the event that the president does not win this election or it goes into a runoff, um, will he accept defeat? Of course. <laughs> what, what a question. Mali has a vibrant democracy. Uh, no president in Mali has ever refused uh, the result of the polls. I, I have no idea why this would start today. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us. And let's uh, talk to Paul Meli now. Um, we, we heard the president say earlier that he inherited a, a, a country with lots of difficulties. Whoever takes over next, what kind of country will they be inheriting? Well, they'll face a country that still faces huge difficulties, which in some ways are slightly different from what happened in 2013, but are still very complex. In 2013, uh, the country was beginning to recover from the fact that the north had been occupied by jihadist armed groups and then liberated by French and African forces working together. But although there's subsequently been a peace, peace accord in the north with armed groups in the north of the country, in central Mali, which is quite densely populated and is economically important, there's been an upsurge in intercommunal violence mixed up with jihadism and which is much more complex and difficult to solve and where the groups are not structured and organized in a political way that you can easily negotiate with. And that problem, to some extent, you can't say it's been neglected, but it hasn't really yet reached the point of a meaningful peace initiative and real breakthrough, despite the efforts of the prime minister who was appointed in December, who's visited the center of Mali several times this year. So what would provide that meaningful breakthrough that you speak of? Well, a really serious peace initiative is required in central Mali with the weight of the international community and West African partners behind it. Because one of the things that happened in the north was that the northern armed groups were effectively told by everybody else in the region and all outside players that there was no option but to buy into the peace process unless they wanted to be categorized as terrorists and become the targets of the international military forces in Mali. Now, in a way, pressure has to be brought to bear in central Mali to tackle the peace, the challenge of finding peace there. But it's more difficult because the problems are rooted much more in local intercommunal factors. It's much, there are ideological elements, but it's also related to issues like land rights. It's a very complex problem that relates, for example, to questions, conflicts between grazing farmers, farmers and cattle herders over grazing rights. And tackling these sorts of issues is going to be very difficult, whoever wins the election. All right, Paul Melly from Chatham House, thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you also very much for joining us, um, Mr. Kamara.